Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to IDMX episode 23. Today we are testing the voltage drop through this gorgeous stainless steel Kennedy Vindicator 21. Uh, Kennedy was also kind enough to send over a Kennedy 25 atomizer with the copper post that we can swap in to check, test also, and a ruby that I'm looking forward to testing. But to test these, since this is epoxied into place, I have to change out the wiring harness so that'll be done at a later time. Otherwise, we have the normal setup, fixed 30 amps being drawn through the atomizer, a solid aluminum slug through the mech, reading the voltage drop of all that through here, and then the table, the description, excuse me, the link is in the description section below. The link of all the voltage drops or power losses through the mechs subtracts the effect of the atomizer and the slug, so you just have the power loss in the mech, and you can directly compare that from one mech to the other. And let's get started. Now to prevent arcing damage from affecting the results, what I do is I press the contact, you get zero, you read zero volts here, and then I fire a two second pulse, we read the voltage drop through the setup, then I let go of the contact, that way I'm not closing or opening the contact when a current is flowing and there's no arcing, and I do separate arcing testing to check for the degree of damage on the contacts, and we'll do that uh, after we test for the voltage drop. And let's, oops. Go to zero volts, pressing the contact and firing the pulse. 113 millivolts. 119. 123. 135. Varies a little bit depending where I put my thumb, which is really tired with all the mech testing I've been doing lately. Okay, that's higher up. I did it on a different portion of the button. 150. Oops, this is just across the center. 144. 155. This is a very hard pressing, so I'm going to... No one's going to do it this hard. That's more normal. 0 0.2. 0 0.2. 0 0.22. Uh, now this was thoroughly cleaned ahead of time. Uh, the normal, when I normally do uh, warm soapy water scrub with a toothbrush, then about a half hour with never dull and all the threads and all over the contacts, then a warm water rinse, and then a dip in 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol to displace the water for quick drying, and then uh, just hitting it with a hair dryer to dry it out as quickly as possible, then stored in doubled up Ziploc bags overnight because I cleaned it yesterday for testing today. So this is about as clean as it can possibly gotten, and it is on here tight. One more test. Yeah, then it goes down to 156. Interesting. Okay, so something. 170. Let's try that again. I don't know if I'm getting down high points or <sighs> just need to go insane with the tightening. Yeah. Something I noticed with the threads here, a lot of other mechs tighten threads and you can go tighter and tighter and tighter and you feel it just, you almost feel like eventually you're gonna break the threads. These, the threads are so, the beefier threads are very strong and it just goes dunk and it stops. Now that means there's not as much chance to slide as you're tightening because it just locks up tight to start with. So to break any oxide layers or to really get a good contact patch, to get a gas tight seal in the threads, you may have to really go past that point to try to get them get the threads to slide past each other and break through and get a good metal to metal contact. Just guessing here, but in doing a faster tightening to go a little bit further than I might normally do when tightening slowly because it locks up so wonderfully with the beefy threads is getting us a slightly better, yeah, it's just a better contact. I'm going to call it 0.158 and that is uh, 
I believe that's the best of the stainless steel mechs, but you'll be able to check the um, table below for it. And when I do the thermal testing, I'll, have, I'll be able to crunch the numbers for this. And let's do the arcing testing. I'm using a 0 0.1 ohm load and Samsung 30T. And what I do is I fire this 200 times and then we're going to take a look at the contacts. And you won't have to watch me, I'll, I'll uh, jump ahead. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200. And what we have is a constant contact button here up against the battery and then it adjusts. And so we have to look at the underside underneath that ledge here because that's what touches down that ring when this is depressed. And one thing I love about here, this setup is how incredibly it easy, incredibly easy it is to uh, disassemble versus some other mechs where you just go through all kinds of grief and tools and everything else. This just comes right apart like that, makes for really, really easy maintenance. So that's wonderful to see. And I am going to take a look at the contacts with a magnifier and I'll throw up a macro photograph so you can see a, a nice close up picture of the uh, two contacting surfaces. And I can see little tiny contact points, but really no appreciable. I mean, it's arcing damage, quote unquote, but they're absolutely tiny and they would come off really quickly with uh, using a Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, my favorite uh, pads, if I can, uh, I should have these out and available if I'm going to talk about them all the time. Uh, these guys. Absolutely fantastic for taking down um, high points on arcing damage. Okay, that's this point. Now I'll take check the underside around the outside here of the contact. There is just... Okay, if someone told me there was absolutely nothing here, I would believe them because you really have to look to say, oh, okay, yeah, I see the little tiny pinpoints. So there's very, very little arcing damage here. And I wouldn't, <sighs> if you had a lot of spare time, yeah, you could do a little maintenance after 200 presses, something like, uh, what was it, the uh, Lost Vape Furion. I would definitely recommend a good uh, cleaning of the contacts from the arcing damage you got after 200 clicks. For this, they're like, no, no, maybe after several hundred you can go in. But since it's so easy to clean, it's just really easy to go in, a couple of rubs with a Scotch-Brite pad, and bam, you know, alcohol wipe, and you're off and running. And uh, let's set up now to do the thermal testing. What we'll see is the heating, uh, what little heating there is. If it is it up here in the 510 threads? Does it start coming through the threads here? Or do we start seeing it in the button itself? Okay, we've got set up for thermal imaging. There's a single layer of black electrical tape around it, so uh, it emits infrared much better. Polished uh, metal is lousy at emitting infrared and any uh, infrared thermal camera readings of polished metal just gives you readings much, much too low. So I ran the numbers for this at uh, 0.158 voltage drop. That's about 4.2 watts uh, being dissipated in the mech. Uh, that's much better than the Dreamer in stainless steel and the TBL 2700 in stainless steel, the other stainless tube mechs I've done, but it's a lot worse than the best performing brass, aluminum, and copper uh, mechs. And it's, it's about the same, it's about the broadside Brizzo brass though, so there are uh, brass mods and other metal mods that uh, perform worse than this one, but this is by far the best in the stainless steel. And I don't know if you can see it here, there's a little bit of a nub, a plastic self-adhesive bumper, which I've attached to the button so I don't heat up the button. We can check the heating for that. And I'm gonna pass 30 amps through this 
and any temperatures you see right now you can see in the lower left hand corner 20 celsius minimum within the field of view of the camera and 29c which is my skin temperature is the max these this won't show you the temperature of the mech while while you're using it this is just to find out where the heating does occur and i'm running at 30 amps continuous so we don't have to wait an hour for the mech to heat up if i'm trying to simulate let's say uh, a vaping use i just want to find out where it is so don't use any of the temperatures you see as some kind of guide as to um actual temperatures while it's going on and what i'm going to do is so i can get my hand on the other end pass 30 amps through it starting now Okay, we can quickly see a couple of spots starting up. And that is just about where it starts the neck down. That's either at the end of the threads or we're seeing something from the inside working its way up. And it's just at those two points, which is interesting. Now you can see the heating the rubber button doesn't heat up, but you can see the copper or the rubber nub doesn't heat up, but you can see the copper button is heating up. So I'm thinking it's the contact itself as opposed to the threads. But then it's transferring just in two points to the case. I'm going to keep going just to see it goes. Now, again, it isn't hot. If you look at the max temperature, it's barely, it's not even reached my body temperature yet. So the mech itself, a little bit of heating in the body of the mech, but only a couple degrees. And that can be just this spreading up. Okay, so it's definitely those two points. And I stop the current flow. And you can see the button. I have just a, a square, squared off, sort of squared off piece of black electrical tape on the button. That's why it's the irregular shape for the red and the white on there. That's kind of interesting. Now the heat, you see as I rotate it, the heat's kind of spreading out mostly here on the button as opposed to up here further in the mod cell. So, but when I press, when I start the current flow again, it's either at the end, end of the threads. Okay, so I'm actually going to, I think, take this apart. Uh, go back to the regular camera, take this apart, and take a look at where that heating is. Like, what is up here? Because right here is where the button screws in. But is this the end of the threads where it's butting up against something or what, what's going on up in here that would give those two hot spots? Okay, electrical tape off. A lot of residue on there. Let's take a look at what is essentially at this point, right about here, where it starts to neck down. And why it would be in two positions, two points. Okay, and that is at the top of the threads. The threads end Yeah, where the threads end, right about here, and that's where I was seeing the two hot spots. But there's nothing. That I can see. That would say, okay, it's only that's where the two spots, unless it's something where this button bumps up against the ends of the threads, uh, but otherwise. Yeah, but there's some heating through the contact, through the points that are here. Hmm. But there's one thing I do want to try. I want to take this contact and the base, the two points, and I want to um, burnish them with a Scotch-Brite pad and find out, does that improve the 0.158 voltage drop? Because I notice, uh, and you saw in the macro photographs, th there's some machining, not machining marks, it's not anything bad, but you know, it's a non-polished surface and would 
burnishing it down, polishing it a little better, make for a lower voltage drop. And I'll be right back. Okay, I realized something. I was trying to figure out why was I seeing the thermal hotspots here and here, or here and here, just across from each other. And I realized that's how power is transferred from the battery negative touches this, it goes down when this gets depressed. When you press the button, it'll touch this ring, let me see if I can get that focus, which transfers the current to here and it crosses over to here through the threads and out through the body of the mech. And same from this point over. And so the current goes through here. When this depresses all the way down, the current goes to these two lugs. And it, depending on how these lugs, this spring retracts, and press the button, that little point there and that little point there transfer, at least for me, the setting here and here. So all the current, or enough of the current, to cause a pretty big voltage drop is here. Now, if there's a little bit ledge, if this isn't flat, if there's a burr along this edge here, something that's preventing good contact at this point, and you can get that heating that shows up as two hot spots in the thermal imaging. But I burnished the contacts. As best I could, I tried burnishing this, but uh, it just, uh, Scottsbury pad a grade on copper and aluminum and brass, but it doesn't do much on stainless steel. But we can find out um, if it did anything at all, and if the burnishing did anything. With uh, And I also burnished underneath here and on top here to try to smooth that out to see if it makes any difference. And we'll get it set up. And I did that, you know, close it and then crack, do that hard close instead of trying to slowly tighten it. And I have to, I'm going to fast forward through this, sorry for the beeping, but I've got to go to a different mode on this because I'm not doing that continuous thing anymore. And we were at 0.158 before. Let's see what we can get now. Closing the contact, zero volts, firing. 0.13 something. Uh, 0.14 something, 0 0.134, 0 0.122, 0 0.13 something. Okay, so it is a little bit better, but I think we're still limited by those two lugs and where they hit the button. So I think the limiting point is that transfer point there and there. That's where most of the current seems to be flowing. And that's why I was getting the hot spot here and a hot spot here. And don't know if there's anything you can do in terms of burnishing down the input, but it's still the best performing of the tube stainless steel mechs. And there are opportunities, I think, to improve the performance even more. And certainly, I love the maintenance, and it's a freaking gorgeous mech. Uh, at least I do. And then I don't like uh, the brass or copper ones as much because I'm one of those people where everything smells on my hands. Uh, so it's great to... Uh, see a good performing uh, stainless steel mech here. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.